Hello guys and girls and welcome to the second part of my Ferrobot tutorial. If you recall from part one, we put together a device like this. So we uh, made our own electromagnets, uh, soldered on some diodes, and then controlled the position of ferrofluids using a power supply. So to scale scale that design up, I've ordered some boards from PCBWay, so I'll be assembling a new Ferrobot, reviewing these boards, but I also added some spots for some transistors. So what this is going to allow us to do is program our uh, Ferrobots using an Arduino. So enjoy! For starters, I soldered my electromagnets to my PCB. I forgot to include the holes in my Gerber file to hold the electromagnets, so I had to drill them myself. This caused it to be a little bit uneven, but it did the job fine. Following the electromagnets, I soldered on my Shockey diodes. Notice how I'm doing all the soldering on the back side of the PCB. This is so that I can maintain as flat of a surface as possible for the side where I'll be putting my petri dish later on. Next, I soldered on my transistors. You'll notice I'm using all N-channel MOSFETs here, and the ones connected to the positive side of the electromagnets don't have to be in a pull-up configuration. That's because the voltage drop across the electromagnets is so small that both sides are practically referencing ground. I then soldered on the wires for the power supply in the Arduino. I was initially planning on using my Arduino Nano, but for some reason it won't show up in my IDE after updating my Mac. So I ended up switching to an Arduino Uno as you'll see in the next step. Finally attach the wires for the rows and columns to the digital pins of the Arduino. I used pins 2 through 5 for the rows and pins 8 through 11 for the columns. Also make sure to attach ground and high voltage. Okay, let's turn on the first row and column and try dispensing our ferrofluid onto a petri dish. I placed the glass petri dish over top of the ferrobot. I used a less toxic alternative to Windex as my suspension and then dispensed my ferrofluid. You can see it's immediately attracted to the electromagnet we turned on. Awesome! I then updated the code to iterate through each electromagnet. Unfortunately, there was one electromagnet in the last column not working, so I ended up removing this uh, column from the demo altogether. Let's see our Ferrobot in action. As you can see, it's working very well. I'm very happy of how this turned out. Uh, I'm really liking the quality of these PCBs I ordered from PCBWay. They are great, and I'll definitely be ordering from them again. With this design, I was way below the specs of my traces. I fixed that in my next version, but as you can see, uh, things are holding up. So definitely would recommend ordering from PCBWay in the future. All right, so that concludes this week's video. Thank you so much for tuning in, and come again next week if you'd like to learn how to control the Ferrobot using Microdrop 3. Microdrop 3 is a software application I've been developing for Ryan and Christian Fobel at Cybots to control their Dropbot platform. Alright, stay tuned and see you next week!